And we are back for episode three and four of Secret Invasion. Preston, it's been a minute. You've been on vacation. How, how have you been? How'd you enjoy it? Oh, I mean, traveling with kids is always, uh, always tough. But yeah, and went, went off to, uh, Seattle, Portland. Had to go to, had to go to a wedding. It went as well as a, as a trip with like, you know, two, two small kids can go. So it was fine. How long were you on the plane for? That had to be like 27 hours. <sighs> On the plane ride? Uh, no, it's not. It's it's not that much. But you got to you got to change plans in like Korea and stuff and and stuff like that. But uh, it wasn't that long. I I can't remember what it was, but it was you know what I'm just guessing like three three hours to Korea and then and then from Korea to the West Coast is like I don't know a dozen dozen hours or something. Anyway, it's 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 all done. It's done. It's in the past. It's in the past. <laughs> Preston came back from his own private torture, just uh, having to fly with small children. So, so in the past is this um, inside joke I have with with my wife. So, once once I was visiting visiting her family, and um, one one of her aunts is is like super talkative, and his uncle is like super chill, and like they pass by, you know, we're, we're trying to park the car somewhere. And the, and the car goes by a spot and she's like, oh, why didn't you get that spot back there? Oh, my gosh. There, that spot. Now. Now there's no more spots here. Da, 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 da. And he just goes, it's in the past. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, <laughs> it's in the past. So like, you know, what, whatever there's something like that, you know, some issue like that. I'm just like, it's in the past. It's a good way to just like, uh, you know, it's done. Um, so speaking of the past, at some point in the past, Rhodey was swapped out for a scroll. You're correct. In uh, the last uh, episode we did on, on Secret Invasion, you theorized yeah. that Rhodey was a scroll. I thought he was just being a government shill <sighs> because he's always kind of been a government shill. But no, he's according to Kevin Feige, there was one appearance before Secret Invasion where Rhodey appears where he was actually a scroll. I'm assuming that was oh, really? Falcon and Soldier. Interesting. I can't remember. I can't remember where he showed up in Falcon and Winter Soldier. In the beginning, um, he talks to. Um, oh, did he? Thing like the, uh, episode one or two, okay. where he talks to. Oh, Anthony Mackie's character. I forget his name. Falcon guy. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I. I t- Okay, I, I really hope it wasn't Scroll Road. It, it probably wasn't significant or something. Um, I thought that the first Rhodey scene was pretty good because it is ambiguous. There's definitely like people saying, oh, I think maybe he's a Skrull, you know, but but it's close enough and it's ambiguous enough that you can definitely be fooled by the first by the first um, interaction. And then the second interaction when he's like, yeah, you got to go kill Nick Fury. You're like, OK, he's a Skrull. Like, come on. <laughs> and then and then the, the, the next one, they just show him in the shower um, and you're like, okay, in case you didn't get it, he's a scroll. So they just straight up show it. I, you know, I, I kind of feel they could have, um, you know, downplayed the other, the other, the, the order or so, you know, had it, had it framed differently. If Rhodey were a little less of a dick and a little less threatening, cause he, he straight up tells her like, I'm going to kill you unless you kill Nick Fury. And you're like, well, come on. Well, <laughs> that's not, that's not Rhodey. You know, but had it been something like we've got intelligence, it's really imperative. He's, you know, um, yeah, I, 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 I say this with a heavy heart, but I, you know, I think, I think something's up, you know, or something, you know, then, then they could have extended on the mystery a little bit longer. That's what I agree with you on is that they showed their cards with Rhodey a little too early. And I think they might have done this because we only do have six episodes for this show. Um, but yeah, the, yeah. the show lives and dies on its paranoia that it can give to the audience. And for like the first two episodes, it was there. Um, towards the end of episode three, eh. Uh, episode four kind of reveals the question I had is which, whether does Fury know that his wife was a scroll? And for the longest time, I'm like, yeah, he has to have known. He's cool with the scrolls. Like he, he totally would have married one, but I guess not. I don't know. Were you confused by that? Like, did I? W- I was very confused because I thought it was the same scroll that introduced him to that. W- that was at that refugee center, mm-hmm. and, and I'm saying that only because um, it seems like that scroll was black and underneath <laughs> the makeup, um, and then he's married to a black woman. I mean, 
I, you, you can't actually get a very good look or, or there, I went back. You, there's no like real close up of the woman at the refugee center. And so then when they do the flashback of him going to the bar, doesn't he, doesn't he say something about her face or something? Or that's pretty face. Or maybe it was just some sort of like meta commentary on, on it. Cause it just seems like he, he would have figured it out at that point, but I guess he, he only figures it out really late he's been married to her all these years and didn't figure it out he's also established that he's never really home that much so yeah yeah I, I, and they don't really know each other very much they've been married for a long time but not really you speaking know? of which she that's crazy he asks her how'd you get that face specifically and she goes well yeah this woman was dying so we had this agreement that i could totally take her face sounds like the very tail end of a twilight zone episode where the entire episode is spent on these two people and you never see the alien's face until the very end it's like oh this person was an alien and they're making right, a pact right. okay yeah it's um it's quite a bit of a quite a bit of betrayal I mean, in a sense, like not not revealing such an important part of your of your of your backstory uh, to somebody, you know, um, you know, keeping that huge secret. So, like, you know, it really said something. See, I liked the idea of him knowing it was a scr- she was a scroll because it really opens you up to uh, Nick Fury's character. You know, he's like, you know, it, it would establish him that he's a an open person. You know, and that he's willing to love a scroll. Right. Um, and then when they take that back, like, um, then, then it, it's like, oh, well, I guess, I guess not. It, it, there, there's a lot of, um, especially with, 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 it's Talos, yeah? His, the, the, the name. A back and forth about Talos, like, at times, him and Nick Fury seem like they're not old friends, and then at other times, they're very old friends, you know? Um, and it's, you know, and then, yeah, you know, the, the, these scenes where you feel like Nick Fury is discovering things about the Skrulls, but he's been living a Skrull, in a Skrull universe where we've, we find out now that the Skrulls are responsible for basically every great thing he did in his job to get himself promoted, you know? And that he should be, he should, he should know the ins and outs, everything about them, essentially. But, but what can you do? Like the show, the show is trying to like learn, like have the audience learn about the scrolls, and uh, and so I guess you know he has to be the person that's discovering things along with the audience. But I thought it would have been cool. I thought it would have been cool to have him, um, you know, know that know that his wife was a scroll the whole time and have having fallen in love with a scroll. That makes more That's sense stupid. because otherwise, why did she shapeshift into why did she take it seems like she uh Fury's wife, I forget her name, um it feels like she was yeah. undergoing a mission by Gravic the whole time for years. <clears throat> but Gravic, when we first meet yeah. him in like the nineties, he's a young kid. So how long has Gravic been planning this? Like was this a, some kind of contingency plan right. by the scrolls to get embedded with Fury just in case he goes rogue? See, I almost liked the idea of okay, actually like he's been dealing with he's been dealing with scrolls for so many decades that he got to know some and he fell in love with one and got married to one. Like I thought that was a more logical story than actually there was a plant this entire time. Um, and then, and then he, and then he was fooled because it also makes him look kind of dumb. Like it, he never caught on that this woman was, a that this woman was an alien. Like they never talked about her childhood and she never made a, she ne- never like had a mistake, never messed up. Mm-hmm. You know, in her story, man, Fury's dumb. I guess he's never, I guess he's never around. I guess there are those people that are just never around their significant others. I mean, people in the military or, or, you know, uh, very busy business people can, can have spouses that they hardly know, but. They also have to explain uh, how come the scrolls never bothered shapeshifting into every single world leader. Um, Like. Okay, they they, they want to cause the, <laughs> yeah. the nuclear catastrophe on the planet. Cool. And th- what they need is, like, to be – they need the president of the United States and the president of Russia. Just shapeshift as them. 
be be them. Yeah. Right. Like if you can get to if you can get to Rhodey, like why can't you get to the president? And, exactly. Yeah. And if you got to Rhodey, if you get to like you go up the ladder, right? You you you, you know you hit up Rhodey's right. friend and then Rhodey and then you know so yeah. the Secret Service you, you, and you, the president. You get you infiltrate you infiltrate the entire Secret Service. You replace all the Secret Service one by one, and then at one point you take the you replace the president. Right. So. Like, there's a lot of weird moments like that. Episode 3 had another weird moment that someone pointed out to me that I also thought was weird, but you kind of forget about it. For some reason, um, uh, so, so when Fury and Talos go to the British guy, the British general's house, and Talos gets yeah. captured, yeah. and then Fury holds the kid hostage, if the general is a scroll, why does he care about the kid? You care about this kid, but at the same time, you're about to start nuclear annihilation? Unless, because there, it feels like a scene is missing, that the scrolls' weakness mm. is that when they absorb the memories of like these people they capture to be them, they also absorb their their emotions and attachments to the people they love. That would make more sense, but they didn't establish that. Or maybe he he's been living this guy's life for so long that he's he's actually had an attachment to the, the to the son. However, when she went into the father's mind and and found the the password, which was just like. The, it's such a it's such a lame trope um guessing passwords like no one's going to choose their 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 kid's name as like the code word like it's just not gonna happen <laughs> okay <laughs> it's just it's just not i understand that's the plot of freaking war games it's the plot of every like so many things where people like guess the password and get the password and it's like the, the their kid's name and it's like no you have to like Whatever, have an alphanumeric character. Or but I thought I thought you were Mister. <laughs> it's not going to be. That I thought you simple. were Mister. Government is uh, very incompetent. You you don't think the government would be very incompetent to the point where they would make that the code? No. Well, you forget that the government that it's government's incompetent, but at the same time, it's more bureaucratic than is in, that it is incompetent. Like the the government's more like okay, you need to change your password every every thirty days. And it's got to include like between ten and fifteen characters with one capital and one lowercase and an, an alphanumerics that are not in order and a, and a and a special character. And it's so complicated that you write it down and put it on a post-it on your on your screen. Like that's like government. <laughs> like it, it. Like that's the level of incompetence that they'd be like that they have some sort of like bureaucratic policy that's not really well thought through. They're like, well, we need to make the password super super complicated, but then it's so complicated and you're changing it so often that no one can remember it. So they put it on a post-it note and then put it on their screen, and then the freaking anyone can go to their computer and like unlock it. Like that's that's a more realistic situation. Um, you say that now, but I I I remember hearing a story, and I just googled it that uh, for the longest time the nuclear launch codes for the United States was zero 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 zero. Ah, uh, <laughs> I mean, maybe maybe it was years ago. I couldn't imagine. Yeah, years now. ago, but now, yeah. right? I could see yeah. that. I, I'll take it. I, to me, it sounds believable a little bit. Yeah, fine, but it's uh, but you're but yeah, you need to establish that the. That the scroll would somehow have an attachment to the child, or or maybe he was still trying to keep his identity secret and thought he could fool them or something. And he's like, "Well, I gotta pretend like I like this kid. I don't even like this kid." Um, it did seem very fast when he's like, "Okay, you've got you've got ten minutes. I've got to go get this password." And like, what if she were like, "Actually, I went for a walk, and I'm like twenty minutes away from the compound," you know, <laughs> or like. You know, the fact that she's able to get in there, defeat guards, find the dude, go into his brain and call back like it's just uh, and get the get the password back. It's uh, it's a little silly, but fine, fine. We'll take At it. At least in the end, it was all their plan and it was really to uncover the mole. Yeah. And and poor Amelia Clark. I thought for a minute there she was dead. But of course, I did. She, yeah, she uh, she has the extremist. Do you remember where extremis is from? Um, the extremist I, virus I, I, that I know, allows her and Gravik to repair themselves. So there was an earlier episode where they established that he was he was cr- trying to create super scrolls and was doing mm-hmm. like research. Do you mean from the comic book? No, no. So the extremist virus is the um, so when Fury shoots Gravik at the very end of episode four, he regenerates, and that's how Amelia yeah. Clark is able to survive her gunshot because she has it as yeah. well. 
Extremis is from the Iron Man 3 movie, a very forgettable movie, except for the soundtrack. I will always remember the... Oh. Yeah, so... Yeah, yeah. The, no, I mean, I, it's coming back to me that, that guy, mm-hmm. Pierce, was, like, regenerating and stuff, right? You're saying it's that? Yeah, that's the Extremis virus. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Huh. All right. I mean, it's kind of this um, combination because Super Skrull was a, was a character from like there's a single Super Skrull, but he was a, he was a character from uh, um, uh, from uh, the comic book as like just a really really powerful Skrull that people could fight. <laughs> Didn't Super he have the, the powers of the Fantastic Four? I think that's where he first appeared. I think he, it was a very early issue of Fantastic Four. Uh, like re- like way way like in in their first or second year of the comic book, um, they fight Super Scroll, who is who I think has the he has like all these different abilities and and stuff like that. Um, I, I I'm trying to think, yeah, we could you know probably bring up the the Super Scroll Fantastic Four cover. Because um, I remember, uh, uh, I remember looking it up and a while ago, and the Super Scroll, it looked like he had the powers of the Fantastic Four, like uh, Mister Fantastic stretching, uh, uh, f- Human Torch's fire stuff. I'm assuming this is replacement for that. Groot's trees or the stretching power. <clears throat> and uh, you're right, yeah. In the so this is issue 18. So yeah, I was right. It was in the uh, the second year of the uh, of the comic book. He seems to have all of their abilities at once. I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed that only, only, um, I gotta, only Rhodey was a scroll. I wanted more, uh, I wanted the cast to be a bit bigger, and so the paranoia is more there as to who really could it be, you know? Mm. But then again, I mean, you're right, else? you're right that, like, in this situation, everybody is a scroll. Right. And so it's, or, or like, or whoever is a scroll is pretty obvious, and they, they, like, tell us, mm-hmm. you know? It's quite clear, and they're wearing green, as you said. <laughs> they stopped Man, wearing green after episode two, which is which kind of sucks. I really like that being like an uh, open secret. His his wife was wearing like a green scarf and stuff. Oh, was she? Maybe, I maybe, actually maybe not. Noticed. Yeah, maybe not Rhodey, but like, yeah. Uh, uh, it, well, it's, yeah. it's also a shame that the cast for this show isn't bigger because the whole point of the scroll paranoia is that they could realistically be anybody we've met before and trust. But the only returning character that from like previous films that fit the bill is Rhodey. Mm-hmm. Everybody else is like a staunch good guy, like Nick and Maria Hill, or completely new characters we don't really right, care right. about yet, yeah. like Gaia and Fury's wife. But their scrolls are ready, you know. Like Secret Invasion doesn't have like those normal side characters we we've, we've enjoyed in previous movies and shows, like uh, in Wandavision with that with that uh, group of characters and that one woman. Fuck, I forgot her name. Right, like Park, Park. Park and the and the and the and the girl from from Thor, um, right? The 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 two broke girls girl. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I mean they're very likable. They were very like it's funny how likable the, the human characters are. Um, maybe it's because we can relate to them, you know. Mm-hmm. Like the most human, the most human characters we kind of like, or Ant Man's Ant Man's like crew of of ridiculous thieves. Like right, they're really enjoyable. Man, all the human characters in in Marvel kind of rock. Yeah, they're cool, but none of them fit in this type of spy esque thriller, you know, type of situation. Like, why would you right. know? Why would Park be or girl from Two Broke Girls? Why would she be in this <laughs> randomly? Like, eh. you're right, and they're too, they're a little too funny. Mm-hmm. Um, you need. I mean, you could get um, the the you know the the guy from Community. Isn't he in the universe? And he was in Shield. Oh, he was in Community. Yeah. Oh, that's right, he was. Oh, oh, his whole thing is Community. His whole <laughs> like rise was from Community. No, but Dan, you know him as the the voice in Ducktales, right? Why would you say that? Why do you think? Why do you think I would? Yes, I do know him as Huey Duck. You're correct. But why would you <laughs> because because he kind of became because Community. So Community never was really watched that much which is why it got canceled but <clears throat> um danny pooty went more viral because he was on the uh um he was on larry king live once and he's talking to larry king and larry king asks him um what's uh what's a what's a guilty pleasure of yours and he's like ah think coffee you know I, I i think coffee is my guilty pleasure and and larry king's like 
coffee. Coffee is your guilty pleasure. I was thinking something a little more extravagant. And Daddy Pudi is confused. And he's like, well, what do you, what, what do you mean? And he's like, and he's like, I was thinking something like, you know, a yacht. And, and, and Daddy Pudi's like, Larry, I'm on ducktails. <laughs> like, like, and it's so, <laughs> and it's true that like Larry King, I mean, keep in mind, Larry King was old at this point and like out, like it had been wealthy for so many years. And so just the fact that like Daddy Pudi is just like, Larry, I'm on, I'm on ducktails. <laughs> like, like as, as like bringing him down to earth. <laughs> Um, and that kind of went viral. So, but yeah, Danny Pudi is in Avengers on the helicarrier um, and stuff like that. So, oh, um, yeah, they could have had him. They could have had him. Yeah. Or anybody from the Shield show. They could just grab some of the actors from the Shield show. I think. I think the, the Shield in. show is in another universe. That's like a different different thing altogether. Right. I understand, but like, they still look. Daredevil was from another universe, and they still shoved in Daredevil, right? Yeah. Kingpin was from was from another universe. Actually, and they still shoved in Kingpin. Actually, um, so that Daredevil and Kingpin from the Netflix, that's still another universe. They just mm. decided to bring the actors back. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. Like, and so they can do the same with like Agents of Shield, bring in some people just as like in background filler. Why mm, not? I guess. You know? Yeah. I don't know. Just yeah. it's it. it, it it would have, the, the secret invasion would have seemed more insane and like oh shit if they I don't know scrolled if that's even I'm gonna use it as a verb scrolled into like other characters that we like and know that are like super powerful but I guess Gravik is an asshole yeah. who has been wiping out characters we like left and right first Maria Hill now Talos yeah it's uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he's a he's a motherfucker <laughs> I, I, really, I mean really I, hate it him. feels like ta- it feels like Talos is dead. Which is really too bad because I feel like Talos has been carrying the goddamn show a little don't bit. You think? Yeah, yeah. Amelia Clark's character is whatever, and I, I love Sam Sam Jackson. I mean, but... yeah, I mean, Amelia Clark's character is whatever, and I, and because she, they haven't given her any material. She's just kind of like sitting there, um, like oh my god, sad. Oh my gosh, all the time. Mm-hmm. They haven't really g- given her too a very good dialogue. Talos, they gave the the best because we're dealing with this like contentious relationship between him and Fury and him and his own people and him and his own like identity. So, um, and then they, I have to say, Fury's wife, they gave a lot of great lines to, you know, <laughs> they gave a lot of good material to as well. Um, and so I, I kind of feel like episode four, episode three and four, the show is kind of hitting its stride and getting better. Um, certainly episode four is a little less dull. It's more exciting. I think episode four is the most exciting. Really? But, uh, I've actually been enjoying the show consistently throughout. Really? You've only now started huh. liking it? I've, I've, I've really been getting into it. I've been enjoying it. I, I thought the start, I thought the beginning was a little slow. You know, I, I, I thought it was a little dull. But um, now that now that I've gotten to know all of these characters and, and they're dropping like flies, unfortunately. <laughs> but now that I like now that I kind of know the villain and I know the characters and you kind of know what's going on, um, it, it seems a, it seems a little better. Um, even Nick Fury has a little more direction than just wandering around like an old sad sack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I agree with you, Ta- Talos and so- Sonya carries the show a little bit sam jackson is great as always oh and and olivia you know i have to say, even though she wasn't in the past two episodes too much but um olivia olivia um coleman yeah she is um whenever she's on screen she's fucking incredible but they, they didn't give her much they didn't give her anything in the past couple or much very much i think he calls her on the phone for a second like in episode three but olivia coleman is is great um, so I don't know. I, th- I thought things were coming together a little better in the pa- past couple episodes, but, um, but still, you know, I don't know. Um, we'll see how it ends. You know, I, 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 after the first two episodes, I was like, this might be the weakest Marvel series. And now the next two episodes have kind of come in and, um, I'm feeling a little better about it. And so now, but we'll see how it finishes. See if it finishes. Really? Uh, you thought, well. even though it wasn't done yet, you thought this was like, was about to be the weakest? I don't know, man. To me, Miss Marvel or I'll even say Falcon and Soldier have been so far the <sighs> weakest for me. I mean, I, 
Uh, yeah. Ms. Mar- what's funny is that like in if I if I were just going on the first two episodes of Ms. Marvel, I'd be like Ms. Marvel was great, and then it falls off real fast. Mm. Uh, Ms. Marvel, um, Falcon and Winter Soldier also started strong and, we- and ended weak. So with with a with a f- a finale of essentially Falcon coming down and telling world leaders they need to do better. And that being like the climax of the movie, of the, of the series, you know? Um, so we'll see. We'll see uh, see how it all comes together. But, uh, I mean, I guess we can't judge it at this point. So, yeah, I will put it above. At this point, because the past two episodes were stronger, I'm putting it ahead of Falcon, Winter Soldier, and Ms. Marvel. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Maybe it'll... Maybe it'll all fall apart again. We don't know. I don't know. Two more episodes. I'm hoping it can... Because everything so far has been great. You know, the acting's been great. The tension has been pretty... Acting's pretty, been great. You know, good in there. I, I wish we had more paranoia and more characters to question whether or not they're scrolls. But uh, with with uh, Talos... Uh, I, I, I hope he doesn't die because I really do like the character. But um, it had to happen because, like he told Kira... Or, or not Kira... That's her character from Solo, uh, Gaia, in the uh, earlier in the episode. That uh, if we save the president and the whole world, then they'll have to like look kindly on us. And uh, he ended up doing just that. I thought that there would be a scene where the president is like just regaining consciousness to see Talos saving him, and you know, seeing him die and mm-hmm. all that. So, I'm... it's kind of an important aspect mm-hmm. to it, right? So. We'll see what happened, but so far I am enjoying the show. It's good that you're it, it's getting up there for you, and uh, yeah. Uh, do you have any more thoughts on the whole whole series before we sign off? Um, I'm trying to think. Um, it it's it's an it's an the whole story is a bit odd in, in, in the sense that we have all of these. It's it's almost like a vignette of of personal scenes between people. That has very little to do with the main story, right? Like the past two episodes has been has been largely focused on um, Nick Fury and his wife, and her him being away, and her feeling pain that he's away all the time, and whether or not like um, her own mission, you know, whether she loves him enough to to not kill him, right? And then. And then there's a lot of like interpersonal stuff between Talos and Nick Fury about whether or not he appreciates and values this this friend of his for all of these years. Um, and um, and then there's then there's the stuff between Talos and his daughter and whether they have like a connection and who she's loyal to. But none of that none of that really has to do with like the main story, which is just like the 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 main the villain wants to create a war by by having people fight each other right yeah i i um, haven't really gotten the sense that gaia was always into the uh the cause like she led on that she was she always felt mm. like talos a spy in gravik's operation i i, I didn't get the sense right. that she he didn't he didn't have to try very hard to turn yeah it. there was no like yeah there's no like big moment i guess um but yeah it, it it's uh it's interesting that that the main plot of the story isn't really driving most of the scenes. Most of the scenes are very conversation driven. Even like the hate scenes between like Rhodey and Nick Fury, they're not so driven by the main plot. Like it's just it's just a, it's a lot of like it's a lot of little scenes of people bickering at each other. Um and very little scenes of like what do we need to do to stop this person from killing the president, you know? It, 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 it's it's interesting put together because it's um i mean i am kind of digging it i'm digging those conversations but uh and you know i guess is it about the human heart and conflict and interpersonal relationships and things like that um or you know the i guess there's a, a larger issue about identity and and assimilation and feeling like um um you know being appreciated and becoming part of something because because if we're really talking about like talos right talos felt 
he has that conversation with Amelia Clark where he, where she's like, what's your plan? What's your plan to give us a home? And he's like, well, we, we keep contributing and then people will see that we have value. Um, which is sort of like the, the, I mean, I guess this gets back to like refugees and immigration, right? Like the, you know, like how do we, how do immigrants, um, how do they, how do they end up accepted? You know, and the, and the only thing that, that you can kind of do is to contribute, contribute, right. Until, until the society accepts them. And she's like, that's just not going to work. Um, and th- that's, you know, I do think that's a very interesting, an interesting conversation they had, you know, because as I say, like, I say this a lot. Um, if a scene has nothing to do with the plot, it usually has to do with the theme. And a lot of these scenes have nothing to do with the plot because uh, the plot is pretty straightforward. Got to stop dude from killing president. Got to stop dude from blowing up jet and start a nuclear war. But then there's all of these different scenes about um, inclusion and appreciation and assimilation and acceptance and stuff like that, which uh, which are interesting. And so I I guess I really do like the past couple episodes um, and and focusing on these questions um so uh, uh, hopefully uh hopefully it'll all come together i don't know you're 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 the immigrant you can tell me if these these like hit home with me home with you. Uh, my people don't shapeshift um so i can't really uh, uh go in with- you what are you talking about you all the time talk about how you're a shapeshifter and i i mean that metaphorically <laughs> Because you say like, oh, I'm Brazilian, but I have an American accent. And I look very white, even though I've got like, even though I'm part black. Mm. Right. And so like no one would guess I'm Brazilian. That's true. So what I'm what I'm saying is this series is really about you, Carmine, is that Thank you're you. a fucking <laughs> scroll. And the only thing you can do to get Just accepted. Save the president. Is contribute. Um, but it's funny because I can understand even from like the other position like Amelia Clark's position like like how like how much like how much time you've put into contributing and like you know how far you like you still have to go and how and how it's like not really fair eh, but it is what it is i i, I you know yeah. what i'll be very honest in, in regards to the whole immigrant thing eh, it is what it is i'm lucky in the sense that brazil is somewhat very much like the United States, there's not a, a big difference when it comes to culture. You know, the only the only difference I can think of off the top of my head is you know football is a huge thing here. Football is a vastly different over there. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I I do understand what you're saying about the social commentary with immigrants and refugees and all that stuff. But like I said in the last episode, the scrolls are way too dangerous, even the good ones, <laughs> to just keep around <laughs> because. One of the good ones, uh, you know, could somehow, you know, uh, get very pissed off for whatever reason and, and cause nuclear so annihilation. Always brings us back to True Blood. And like, because because I was thinking about that, too, again, like our True Blood conversation that we had last time and how mm-hmm. like it was such a bad analogy to try to have the vampires be like gay people because you know gay people can't glamour you and can't suck your blood and don't have a history of like murdering people and then i was like didn't true blood end with them keeping one of the villains as like their their pet blood farm at the end i i'm gonna be very honest with you i so don't fucking remember the last few seasons of true blood the blonde the blonde villain girl the blonde religious villain girl from from pitch perfect Oh, you know is that what I'm talking what ha- about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. She was like the pastor's wife. Is that what happened? Yeah, the pastor's wife. Does doesn't she isn't she like um isn't she just like like at the end they just have her being used as like people get to like I think they people get to pay money to suck her blood and that's like her fate. Um and I'm just like, what? Those these are supposed to be the good guys? <laughs> like like keeping that's, this villain there? That's and what maybe happens. I mean, I mean I, th- well, I mean, I have to look this up. What was their fucking name? I, I'm sure there's like a True Blood wiki. There has, to, of course, um, there is. But I, I actually didn't watch the last two seasons. I thought the show was fucking trash. Like, it it so- totally became. It totally was 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 trash. It was horrible. I mean, I didn't even I didn't even see the the like. I stopped watching, <laughs> and then I was like, oh, 
Um, Damn, okay, even you stopped watching. Fuck. Ser- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. She she becomes season two, season three, season seven, season... See, I'm looking this up. Sarah. Um, here we go. She hallucinates Steve standing in a basement with her and asks her what she's thankful for, and she replies nothing. As Steve disappears and she's left alone in the basement where she will presumably spend the remainder of her life. Eric tells the world that Sarah escaped their clutches and they found her. However, it's later revealed that three years later that she's still being held at Fantasia in the basement. And now Pam and Eric are, are allowing vampires to pay to feed on her. Like, that's... Aren't, isn't Eric supposed to be, like, one of the good people? No, Eric was always an anti-hero, um, through and through. Always. Every, I, like That's not even anti-hero. That's just freaking evil. Yeah. Like, right. That's not anti-hero. That's just, that's just evil crap. Like, so, like, that. that's just kind of, like, when you do these, like, weird analogies and you're just like, oh, God, like, that's just, that's just a horrible, that's just horrible. <laughs> How do I get talking? talking about this yeah we're talking about like what works what works like you know they're making the immigration um assimilation acceptance uh uh, aspect of like in this show but does it apply because in real life you know immigrants can't really (laughs) shapeshift and can't get super scroll serum to make them invincible and if, take if, over If there is an apt comparison, there has to be one towards the Cubans. Remember, like, after the whole revolu- uh, revolution with uh, Castro, mm. some of the Cubans fled Cuba. And ever since then, the CIA has been consistently using Cuban expats to, uh, you know, launch missions all over the United States and against Cuba pay pigs. Yeah, and that's kind of what yeah. we're seeing here, kind of. I mean, there's, there's a couple cases in history... Um, the the Jordanian government was all, all was almost taken over by by Palestinian refugees. Mm. I think the the Fijian uh, government was was almost taken over by Indians. Um, so I mean, there are cases in history where this where this does happen, um, you know. But uh, it's um, it's not it's not necessarily like as Americans something we're like facing too much. Though I'm sure right wingers think. That oh my gosh, the government's getting taken over by all of these, all of these, uh, these others, you know, so. who are now uh, running for government, and uh, the QAnon conspiracies that some of them do suck children's blood for the um, the uh, youthful <laughs> healing properties, apparently. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. On that note, uh, Preston, do you mind if we wrap it up here? Sounds good, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, we'll see you all next time. Have a good one.